Today we commemorate <coughs> the life of St. Stephen of Hungary, who was the first Christian king of, of Hungary. The law of truth was in his mouth. No dishonesty was found upon his lips. He walked with me in integrity and peace and turned many away from evil. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of God be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we take a moment now to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, calling to mind the integrity of life that we celebrate in St. Stephen today, and calling upon God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant your church, Almighty God, that she may have St. Stephen of Hungary who fostered her growth while a king on earth as her glorious defender in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, the headland of Pisgah, which faces Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead and as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negeb the circuit of the Jordan, with the lowlands at Jericho, city of plain, palms, and as far as Zoar. The Lord then said to him, This is the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that I would give to their descendants. I have let you feast your eyes upon it, but you shall never cross over. So there in the land of Moab, Moses, the servant of the Lord, died as the Lord had said, and he was buried in the ravine opposite Beth Peor in the land of Moab. But to this day, no one knows the place of his burial. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were undimmed and his vigor unabated. For thirty days the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab till they had completed their period of grief and mourning for Moses. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom since Moses had laid hands upon him. And so the children of Israel gave him their obedience, thus carrying out the Lord's command to Moses. Since then, no prophet has arisen in Israel like Moses, 
whom the Lord knew face to face. He had no equal in all the signs and wonders the Lord sent to him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and against all his land and for the might and the terrifying power that Moses exhibited in the sight of all Israel. The word of the Lord. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Shout joyfully to God all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Bless our God, you peoples. Loudly sound his praise. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Hear now all you fear God while I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Alleluia, alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother or sister sins against you, go and tell them their fault between you and them alone. If they listen to you, you have won over your brother or sister. If they do not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they refuse to listen to you, tell the church. If they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel acclamation uh, this morning uses uh, the word reconciliation, and, and that's really what this Gospel reading from Matthew is about. Jesus is uh, giving his disciples, um, giving the people that he's speaking to, that he teaches, uh, a path toward reconciliation when there is division or conflict that arises. And it's very, uh, very sound wisdom, actually. Uh, telling them, first of all, go to the person who has offended. Because sometimes uh, uh, the person who offends another doesn't really know, doesn't recognize that maybe they have brought offense or have hurt another person. So Jesus says, take the, uh, take the effort, make the effort to go first and speak to the person that has hurt you or has offended you. If that, uh, if that doesn't uh, resolve the issue, then he says, well, take some, take some other acquaintances. Maybe take some people that you both have in common and discuss the matter. You know, try to reconcile them that way. Thirdly, he says, if that doesn't work, well, bring it to the church. Bring it to the wider community that all may work toward reconciliation of whatever it is that divides uh, people from one another. If that doesn't work, if that fails at reconciliation, then Jesus says, well, treat them as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. 
Now, there's a little debate there about what Jesus means about that. Some would say, and probably rightfully so, sometimes putting a little distance between ourselves and the person who has offended us gives time for a reconciliation to come about. Although we have the example of Jesus, how does Jesus treat Gentiles and tax collectors? He doesn't treat them like they don't exist. He doesn't treat them as outcasts. Rather, he goes and has a meal with them. He spends time with them. He answers their questions. He hears their anguish. Um, he treats them uh, as res with respect and as a fellow human being. And so, yes, it may be a good to put some distance uh, between ourselves and um, allow some time to, to uh, go between ourselves and this person who has offended us. But we must be careful that we don't ostracize them from our lives, that we keep an openness so that they feel an openness to uh, be reconciled and to acknowledge maybe how they have failed or how they have hurt. Um, Teaching, uh, treating as a Gentile or a tax collector in the way that Jesus would treat one as if they were a tax collector or a Gentile with love. let us raise our prayers to God. We pray for peace and reconciliation wherever that, uh, wherever conflict exists between persons or countries or certain populations of a country, that uh, the peace of God may reign there. We pray. We pray for all those who, um, whose work uh, strives to bring peace where there is conflict and to bring assistance where there is need, we pray. We continue to hold in our prayers the people of Maui as they, uh, as they come to uh, recognize the great damage that has been not only to their, uh, their cities and towns but also in their families and those who continue to search for those who are missing, we pray. For the safety of all those who have come to Maui to, uh, to search and to, uh, to assist, and all those around uh, the, our own country who uh, have offered aid and support, we pray. For our school teachers who are preparing to begin a new school year, we pray. We pause now to bring to mind those other prayers we bring with us today. For these we pray. We pray for the people of Hungary as uh, they celebrate this feast day of their country. That. Um, true democracy and uh, peace and justice may reign in their country, we pray. O oh, gracious and holy God, receive these prayers of your people and strengthen us in holiness, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us our spiritual food. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. The fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our offering may be acceptable to God the Almighty. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transformed them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. <clears throat> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the saints and angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O oh Lord, you are indeed holy. You are the source of all holiness. And we ask you to make holy these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, <clears throat> when supper was ended, he took the cup. Once again, he gave you thanks, and giving it to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have counted as worthy to be in your presence and to serve you. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and for all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Stephen and St. Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray now those words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we might be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look then not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share with those around us some sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <clears throat> Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have shared save us, O Lord, and confirm in us the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of God come upon you and remain with you always. The blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go forth in peace. Have you ever seen it before? That's a responsorial sound. Yeah. Oh.